Hello. In this video, I will show you how to work with network appurtenances in InfraWizard. You will learn about managing the appurtenance library, adding appurtenances to your networks, and editing their properties. An appurtenance in InfraWizard can theoretically be any piece of the network that can be represented by a 3D solid object. It can be used to render valves and accessories, or other special structures and network components that cannot be represented by the node types simple fitting and simple structure. First, let's open the appurtenance library. The appurtenance library is like a catalog of the network appurtenances. In order to add an appurtenance to a network, it should first be available in the library. In the main window, you will see a list of the available appurtenance types. An appurtenance type should represent a single family of appurtenances, which share the same function and properties and vary only in size. For example, I have here dry barrel fire hydrant, double eccentric butterfly valve, gate valve with socket ends, and gate valve with tensile coupling ends. These are the types readily available with the installation of InfraWizard. You can add more types as you need if you're able to prepare the necessary input files. You will learn about preparing the standard appurtenance files in the next episode of this tutorial series. If we open one of these types, we'll first find the general properties of it. A good type name should indicate the type of the appurtenance and its basic differentiators. For example, we have here gate valve with socket ends. The description can include more details about this type, such as the joint type, strength class, and allowable applications. And here you can define the manufacturer and the material of the appurtenance. It's useful to add this information because they will all appear in the appurtenance properties when you export a BIM model. Now let's move to the list of sizes. These are the standard pieces of this type of appurtenance that you will insert into the pipe network. Any appurtenance type can hold up to 50 sizes in this list. Each appurtenance size is associated with a set of blocks that will be used by InfraWizard to represent the appurtenance in plan, profile, and 3D BIM models. An appurtenance size is added to the library by loading a standard DWG file that contains these blocks. To load a new size, I'll click Load New. There is a set of ready-made appurtenance definition files available with the installation of InfraWizard. These can be found in the InfraWizard Projects folder located in the Users Documents folder. Each of these DWG files defines one appurtenance size. This is an example of how an appurtenance definition file looks like. In the next video, I'll walk you through the steps of creating a new appurtenance definition file and tell you about the essential and the optional elements of it. It is good to know, for now, that the appurtenance definition contains four blocks that define how an appurtenance of this type and size will look like in plan, profile, and 3D BIM models. The first two blocks in the list are the 3D blocks used in BIM models. The first one, called 3D block at pipe, is the essential block of the appurtenance that will be aligned at the pipe itself. The other block, called 3D block at ground, is an optional block. If used, it will be placed at the ground surface exactly above the main block. For example, it is used here to model the surface box associated with the buried gate valve. Another common use of this block is in fire hydrants. A fire hydrant has a base elbow connected to the pipe. This is the block defined here as the 3D block at pipe. The hydrant barrel itself is defined as the 3D block at ground because the position of the hydrant barrel is always related to the ground level and not to the pipe level. This is how a fire hydrant will appear in a BIM model. You can see the base elbow connected to the pipe, while the hydrant barrel is located above ground. And this is how a gate valve with surface box will look like. Now I will select the definition file of the size I want to load and click Open. It is always good to check the preview of the appurtenance blocks to make sure it was imported properly. You can see some more options here. I can use the rename option to change the size name. This name will appear in the plan annotation, profile data band, and in the properties of the appurtenance in the BIM model. If I click unload, the selected size will be removed from the library. It is really wise that you unload any appurtenance sizes 
that you are not using from the library because when you load a size to the library, the block definitions of it will be imported to the project file. This can increase the file size dramatically if there's a large number of types and sizes. The change path and reload options are used to update the definition of selected size from the source drawing. The reload option will re-import data from the same file path saved here. You can use it if you've modified the contents of the same file. The Change Path option will let you select another source drawing to use. Finally, I'll click OK to apply changes. Now let's try adding appurtenances and know more about their properties. To do this, I will click Add Appurtenance, then select the pipe to which the appurtenance will be attached. Every appurtenance has to be attached to a pipe. You can add up to 30 appurtenances to a single pipe. After selecting the pipe, I should pick the position of the appurtenance on it. Then I will select the appurtenance type and size here. Once I click OK, my valve will appear on plan. This is the plan block we saw in the library a little while ago. You'll notice that adding an appurtenance did not split the pipe. This is how appurtenances are different from nodes. An appurtenance in InfraWizard is treated as an attachment to the pipe, not as a junction element. You can move an appurtenance along the pipe and it will not change anything in the pipe properties. The format of the plan annotation of the appurtenance can be modified in the plan style under the pipe annotation tab. You can select here what information to show. Let me add some more valves to test different cases. I will add a couple of fire hydrants too. Now let's check the properties of an appurtenance. You can open the properties dialog by double clicking or using the context menu command InfraWizard Edit. The appurtenance name is the unique name of this element in the network. Then we have the network name, network type, and the name of the parent pipe of this appurtenance. The description field can contain any text you'd like to add to describe this element. The appurtenance type and size are those we selected when we first inserted this valve. You can change them here to any other type and size available in the library. Bear in mind that InfraWizard will not automatically assign or change the valve size to match the pipe size. You need to change it manually here if you change the pipe size. The appurtenance direction is an important property if your valve is not symmetric. The default value of this property is follow pipe direction. It will make the appurtenance aligned in the same direction of the pipe. For example, this fire hydrant appears reversed because the direction of this pipe is from this node to this node. So InfraWizard has just placed the hydrant in the same direction. To fix this, we can either reverse the pipe itself, or better, we reverse the direction of the hydrant. To do this, I'll change this property to opposite to pipe direction. Looks good now. The axial rotation angle is better illustrated with an example. I have three butterfly valves here. I'll leave the first one unchanged and change the rotation angle of the other two. Changing the rotation angle will not affect the appearance of the valves in plan, but will change their orientation in the 3D model. Let's use Export BIM to see this. You can notice the difference between the three valves. In the first one, the valve wheel is horizontal, just like in the original block. In the other two, the valve was rotated around its axis with the same angle we specified. The last part of the appurtenance properties is the ground level. This part is useful when this type of appurtenance has a 3D block at ground, such as the valve box of a buried valve or the fire hydrant. It works in the same way of the ground level property of nodes. 
It can be a set value or take its value directly from the primary surface or the secondary surface of the network. Let's take a look at how appurtenances are presented in longitudinal profiles. I'll draw a quick profile of this line. Appurtenances are shown on the profile graph using the profile block associated with each appurtenance size. There's a couple of options in the profile style that let you select whether to show the appurtenances and their names or not. To add more information about the appurtenances, you can add the data band called appurtenances. In the data band format, you can select to show the appurtenance name, type, size, or any combination of them. I think you know by now what appurtenances look like in the 3D BIM model. You need only to know that when you export a BIM model, you should specify a third data file for appurtenances. This file will let you append all information related to each appurtenance in Navisworks. You can see that imported properties of each element include all properties of the appurtenance type and size stored in the appurtenance library in addition to the specific properties of this element. If you'd like to remember the process of exporting a BIM model to Navisworks, you can watch part 22 of this tutorial series. You now know everything about using appurtenances in your InfraWizard project. In the next video, you'll learn more about appurtenance definition files and how to create them in the right format. We'll see you soon.